Welcome back. In this lecture, we'll talk about what is Apex and what are the different things you can do with it. Apex is object-oriented programming language and the syntax is similar to Java. Object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm based on the concept of objects, which may contain data in the form of fields, often known as attributes, and code in the form of procedures, often known as methods. A feature of objects is that an object procedures can access and modify data fields of the object with which they are associated. The language is strongly typed. This means that each data type, like integers, text, or Boolean values, are defined within the language. And every variable you define must be described as one of these types. For example, in PHP or JavaScript, you can just declare variables without mentioning the data type. However, in a strongly typed language like Apex, you also mention the data type. Here, we are specifying that A is a variable that is of integer data type and P is a variable that is of string data type. When would you use Apex? You would want to use Apex when you hit the limits of the point and click tools, like validation and workflows. You want to use Apex when complex validation over multiple objects has to be performed. Sometimes, you want to create business processes that are not configurable using a workflow. You can use Apex for that too. You can also use Apex to attach custom logic to any other operation, regardless of origin. Sometimes, you want to integrate an application on Salesforce with your accounting system. When something happens in the accounting system, something else needs to happen in Salesforce. For this, you can create an Apex class and expose it as a web service. I'll talk about web services and Apex classes in a future lecture. You can also use email services to process the contents, headers, and attachments of inbound email. For example, you can create an email service that automatically creates a contact record based on the contact information present in the messages received. Because Apex runs in a multi-tenant environment, the Apex Runtime Engine strictly enforces limits to ensure that runaway Apex code or processes do not monopolize shared resources. I would think about it this way. Companies access their Salesforce instance from a multi-tenant environment, meaning they're all using shared set of resources. If a developer on one instance writes some bad code, like an infinite loop, it can consume most of the resources, slowing down the system for others. To prevent this from happening, Salesforce has execution governors and limits. If some Apex code exceeds a limit, the associated governor issues a runtime exception that cannot be handled. Let me give you an example of using Apex. I haven't yet talked about what Apex classes and methods are, so don't worry about not understanding the syntax. I will talk about classes and methods in another lecture. The idea is to help you get the bigger picture before you dive in. I have created a new field in the leads object and named it hello. I have also placed it on the page layout and the API name of the field is hello double underscore C. Imagine you had a requirement where every time a new lead is created, this field should automatically be populated with the text world. You can achieve this with a workflow. But let's try this out with code. We can start with an Apex class. To create an Apex class, from the developer console, create a new Apex class. You can give it any name. I'm calling it Hello World Lead Class. In the real world, you would want to name it such that it is easy to understand the purpose of it. I also need a method where the logic gets executed. Let's call this method hello world that accepts a list of inputs. 
this method takes the lead that we are creating and for that lead record we are updating the value of the hello field also imagine a scenario where you are importing a bunch of lead records using a data loader that means you are creating whole bunch of new leads all at once so we are taking a bunch of leads and for each of those leads that are being created i would like to update the hello field to a string value world i haven't talked about data types loops or triggers so don't worry if you don't understand any of this if we pass in a bunch of leads to the method hello world it updates the hello field in the lead records to world and inserts it into the database all right now we have the method ready with the needed functionality how do we invoke this method basically i need a way to call this method when a new lead is being created lucky we can use a trigger for that i can create a new trigger give it a name you can call it whatever hello world lead on the lead object i want to fire this trigger before the lead is inserted into the database now i need a way to call the hello world method inside the trigger i can do that using a dot notation class name dot method name trigger dot new here trigger dot new is a variable that contains the new lead records that are being created the hello world method takes these records and loops through them updating the hello field and inserts them into the database let me save this code to check if the code works i'll try to create a new lead and fill in company details notice that the hello field is currently blank and let's save the record you can see that the hello field is populated by the text world i'll talk about the syntax and construction of an apex class and method in another lecture in summary Apex is object oriented programming language it is strongly typed and the syntax is very similar to java you can use apex to extend the base functionality of your salesforce org to do things you can't do with all the point and click administrator tools like building custom business logic or integrating with third party systems using web services and process inbound email using email services Since Apex runs on a multi-tenant environment, to prevent the monopolization of resources, we have execution governors and limits. In the next lecture, we'll talk about data types and variables.